Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you WaveShot processing of a Jupyter video image file that was captured and then stacked in AutoStackert. I'm just going to show you the WaveShot processing. Now, WaveShot has been developed by the same team that brought you Registax, which you may be very familiar with. Registax is no longer in development, so I thought it'd be fun just to show you some of the steps uh, using WaveShop. So the first thing I've done is I've opened up the stacked video file, which is a uh, TIFF file uh, created by AutoStackert. And you can see here there's no further processing has been done on this file. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring in the region of interest or the ROI just to sort of wrap um, around the uh, the image of Jupiter. And you'll understand why in a few moments when we get to the, the RGB processing section. The next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply some wavelets. And you see here in WaveShop, it's a fairly simple interface of just three uh, wavelet settings. For the color model, I've just accepted the defaults here, here. I've checked off L equals RGB. And then the filter I'm using is the Gaussian filter. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this slider all the way along to the right. Um, so when it comes to wavelet processing, it typically uh, processes the, the, the finer elements and then moves over to the coarser elements as we go down here. So you can see things just a little clearer. I'm going to also zoom into the image by clicking on this magnifying glass right here. And so you can see already there's a little bit of noise there um, in the image. I'm going to also increase this value here um, just by one step, um, just to sort of do a little bit more sharpening. We don't want to over sharpen here because sometimes you'll start to see some edge artifacts appear just as we've got maybe just a little bit right here, but we'll leave it as is for now. And then for the next coarser adjustment, I'm going to move the next slider over just to about halfway. So roughly to about there. You can see the image is now getting sharper still and the noise has increased also. And then for the most coarse, I'm just going to move it about a quarter of the way along. The next thing I want to do now is I want to do a denoise process. And in WaveShop, there's this button here with the D. If I click on it, it brings up the, the denoise tool. And there's three settings here. There's a start, a feather, and a curve setting. And I've got denoise turned on, uh, auto update turned on. And these are just the default settings. And if I move this slider here to the left, you can see that the noise actually has decreased quite a bit. Uh, let's just move it a little bit to the right to when the noise just starts to appear uh, right about there. And the next setting is the feathering. So I'm going to shift this all the way over to the right. And you'll see that the noise there starts to reappear again. So let's just move this a bit to the left, just so the noise starts to to disappear. So maybe right around here. And you can see the curve here represents um, the spectrum uh, of, the, of the filtering of the noise. And you can see where the curve kind of splits up here. We want to have this bar here just placed to where that dip is right here. The other setting there is called curve, and it's the filter curve. And if I move this all the way here to the left, you can see some of the noise has come back in. So let's shift this back to the right, maybe a little bit more. And you can see the curves now start to separate, which is what you want. You want a nice clean separation of the curves. And so we'll go to about here. So that's minus one here. And you see there's a nice separation between the two curves. And the noise is not not that bad, not that evident. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to minimize the denoise dialog. And I'm going to want to go into the histogram. So let's bring up the histogram. And we want to do an RGB balance. The first thing I'm going to do is look at the saturation of the image. If I move this all the way to the right, you can see the image becomes quite a bit saturated. So let's sort of go 
let's go about a third of the way along so around about here now I can click on RGB balance and that's why I had the ROI setting here because I want to do the balance just on the image part of Jupiter and not all the background as well so I click here and you see the curve here nicely joins together a little bit and then I'm gonna move this luminance setting here just over we don't want to blow out the details and go too far so we'll just keep that highest curve there under about 55,000 and then we can go ahead and go back to the image here and you can see we've got a, a nicely processed image the scene conditions weren't that great for this capture so it doesn't look anything like what you may have seen in some of the posts online where you've got some beautiful Jupiter images this is sort of reality uh, of what was captured on that particular night but you can still see some of the uh, some of the details in Jupiter and you can then save this file uh, right here you click on save and then you can do some more processing um, in Photoshop um, or GIMP or whatever your image processing tool is and that's it